Megan Mullally, um, first of all, congratulations on your Emmy nomination. Uh, this is your eighth nomination. Wow. Is there something different about being nominated this time around than the than during the original run? Yeah, I mean, I I wasn't expecting to be nominated, quite frankly. Um, because there's, you know, there's so many shows now compared to, you know, there's 500 scripted shows now. And when we were on the air, there were like four. So, <laughs> and there's so many great shows and there's so many great actors. It's so rare now that you see an actor that's not, that's nothing less than like, well, they were great. Um, so I wasn't really expecting it. And I didn't know the nominations were coming out because I'm totally out of it. Uh, but I think there is also that added element of the, it's kind of surreal that we did this show for eight years and then it was over forever and ever and ever as shows are when they end, that's it forever till the end of time. And then, but it wasn't, and it came back and it's now on again and everybody's really happy to have a job. <laughs> so who was, who was the first, this all of course started with that vote honey election video. Uh, who was the first person to say yes to that? Well, um, I will now reveal myself to be a famous psychic because um, I got that script, Max Muchnick and David Cohan wrote that script and Max sent it to the four of us and I read it and I was laughing and crying and I put it down and I picked up my phone and I texted Max, why can't we just do the show again? And he texted right back, we can. And of course, neither one of us knew what we were talking about. We're just pulling it out of our bums. But um, I just had an extremely strong uh, gut feeling that we could do not just the Vote Honey video, but actually bring the entire show back intact and just do it again on television. And then we did. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I've asked this question to the rest of the cast. Um, was it easy for you to just slip back into Karen's skin? Or, because uh, I know Deb had said it took a little longer for her to get back, you know, to feel confident again in it. Was it easy for you to get back into it? I felt like it was. I always, I always felt like in the eleven-year interim when we weren't doing well in Grace, I always felt like Karen was just going on about her business being horrible in a parallel universe somewhere right here, and um, so I felt like it was pretty easy. But now, like now that we're doing the second season, there are certain things that I think, oh. Right. <laughs> and I've, I've seen little clips from the first season. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like, it's like quite exactly right, but it's close enough. But this season, I feel like now we're fully, fully locked in. What, what, without, I know you, you've started uh, filming season two and, and, uh, but, and I know you can't say a lot, but what, what do you think is different about this coming up season? Well, I don't know. I really love the. I think the scripts have been outstanding. I mean, the scripts were amazing last year. And I think so far we've shot three or four episodes, depending on how you count. Um, and I think that they're really, really strong. Um, this season, Karen, uh, the character of Karen um, is getting a divorce because she, Stan, Stanley Walker, finds out that she been cheating on him with um, Alec Baldwin's character, character Malcolm, and divorces her. So it's great. It gives me something to play and sink my teeth into and something for them to write to. And I also, um, I think I can say, I get to sing. I get to sing on the show this year. And they figured out a way, which I can't tell you, I can't reveal that, but they figured out a way to allow me to sing as me and not as Karen. Hmm. And that's that's an interesting idea because you know you have sung on the show before, you know, in the famously in the finale episode that you won an M one of your Emmys for, uh, one of your two. Um so does 
is that something that you ask them to do because you are you know famous for being on Broadway and 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 singing all around the country? So is that something that you asked, or is that something that just sort of organically happened? Yeah, it it happened. I never I never would ask something like that because. I, I couldn't, the way that they figured out how to do it, I never even would have thought of. So no, I didn't ask, but what happened was I have this band called Nancy and Beth that is my, kind of my heart and soul right now. And um, we've been touring a lot and making records and uh, Max Muchnick and David Cohan and Jim Burroughs and a couple of the writers came to see one of our shows in Los Angeles at Largo. And I think that planted a seed in their heads, like, oh, we got to get her to sing on the show. Uh, just, just seeing me perform and sing over the, the hiatus. I think maybe that planted some kind of seed. <laughs> no, I, I never tell them. I never say anything. I'm always just like, whatever. You know, like, I feel like they always come up with such great stuff. They're such great writers, and they come up with so many great stories. And I... I feel like I never even have to say anything. Well, and you bring up you bring up Jim Burroughs, who has directed every single episode uh, of of the series, and something that you don't see very often uh, in television. What does what does what does he bring as a director? Uh, wh why do you think this fit is so good for him? He's he's the master. I mean. He, uh, there will never be another Jim Burroughs. He, he's been doing this since the Mary Tyler Moore show. I mean, his pedigree is unparalleled. Done all the great shows, Cheers, Taxi, Friends, ever, all of them. And now we're so lucky. I, Will and Grace is the only show that he's ever done, directed every single episode of. But he has this almost sixth sense about comedy and also about where the camera should be so when we're rehearsing he's so great with physical comedy he'll say you know honey sit down on that line like he just knows little things and then he's great at whenever if sean and i have a slap fight that's when sean and i and jimmy have had so much fun choreographing those and just laughed our asses off. And um, also though, he has this crazy thing if you ever come to a taping, which you have, um, he'll walk, it's, you know, four cameras, right? Four big giant cameras um, rolling around and he will walk along and sometimes he closes his eyes. He doesn't even watch us. He doesn't watch the monitors. He doesn't watch us. He just listens to it. And Occasionally I've seen him doing that and he'll go over and he'll just kick a camera over like two feet to the left and he's not even looking. He just knows that they're two feet too far to the right. I mean, it's really, it's something to see. It, it is. I mean, I've, I've been to several tapings, including from last season um, and just I, I've seen him do that exact thing of just moving a camera just slightly and he never looks at a monitor. He's like prowling through the back. Yeah. Yeah, he's like a like a like a directorial panther of some sort. <laughs> I like that. So, nickname. so let's go back to the beginning because you've said this several times that you audition were originally auditioned for the role of Grace. Uh -huh. um, and didn't really even look at Karen as somebody you even wanted to play. So I didn't even remember that there was a character of Karen. I didn't remember any other women being in the pilot. So I auditioned for Grace and they just totally flatlined. And I went home and forgot all about it. And then a couple weeks later, my agent called and said, um, they want you to come in and audition for this pilot will and grace and i said i heard an audition for that dumbass and she was like no it's for did the other part and i'm like what other part and so she said okay let me send you the script again so i read and then i read it and i was like oh yeah but that show sybil with sybil shepherd had just been on and christine bransky who the great christine bransky had just played her rich sassy sidekick and i thought well i can't I mean, it's not going to get any better than Christine Bransky. I mean, I can't, 
top that. But then I thought, you know, I guess I could make her weird, like weirder than was necessary particularly written in that exact script at that exact moment. So I just tried to make her quirkier and weirder. And then that seemed to be the thing that they liked. And then everything started changing and evolving and they started writing to that. And then they would come up with things that I never would have thought of. And then I would try to come up to their level. And we just, it, you know, a collaboration, I think it's called. <laughs> Is that also is that, is that also how the voice ended up changing and yeah. and becoming higher? Is was that just a result of the back and forth? That was a result of past experience. Um, I had a penchant for going into auditions with really big characters, only because when I first read a script, especially if it's a if it's a comedy, when I first read a script, I just get. I just get this picture of what the character should be. And it's kind of fully formed with a voice and a body language and a whole thing. And I can't shake it, you know, unfortunately. I mean, it's hard for me to like think, well, maybe let me try something else. Like I have to go with my gut. So I would go into auditions with these big choices and sometimes I'd get the part and sometimes they would call security. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, okay, I'm going to make her weird, but I didn't realize at that time that the pace of the show was going to turn out to be closer to farce than really anything like a musical comedy without the music. Because when we, when I auditioned for the pilot, it, it wasn't necessarily written that way. Like I didn't, I hadn't experienced Jim Burroughs yet and all of that. So then when we started shooting the show, it was, you know, really fast. And I thought, Oh, my natural speaking voice is very laconic. It doesn't fit. And so I instinctively kept making it higher and higher over the first, say, 10 episodes until it was in the stratosphere. And I also then, that was more of a gut instinct. And then later on, like analytically, I thought, well, it fits. It's a good, it's a funny aspect to the character because she's the most judgmental person on earth. And yet she has this thing that you can't escape, which is her voice that'll just drive you to drink. So <laughs> yeah. she'd probably join you for the drink. So yeah. people <laughs> but this day think that I still, that I really talk like that in real life. <laughs> well, I know I have like a sort of, I mean, I know my voice is annoying and sort of high, but it's not like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to talk about Rosario's Quinceanera, which was really your, your highlight. That's your, your Emmy submission. Um, there's a great thing. I think I don't know whether you or Max posted it on I think Instagram of you reading the the monologue in the script from the first uh, from the first table read. Um, um, it was in his office. It was in his office. Yeah. Um, he went up to his office and he and he handed me a page and he said, "Just I'm not going to tell you anything. Just read this." And I read it cold and he filmed it on his phone. So did you know pretty much instantly that that episode was going to be special? Yes, I really, really did because I've been doing this now for a long time and I can say I've gotten a lot of great jobs I'm very thankful for. I can honestly say though that no one has ever given me the opportunity to show that side of myself or of a character in that way. Um, and I was absolutely so thrilled and filled with gratitude. And it was, I was very, very moved by it. And I thought it was, I was, um, you know, I was just so happy that they felt that that was something that, that they had confidence in me and that they would, that they thought, well, we're going to write this for Megan and we, and we think she can pull it off. And that meant, meant so much to me. And uh, yeah, that, that was by far, but episode as a whole, I think is very masterfully written. It's written by Tracy Pouse and John Canale. They actually won the writer's guild award for that, which was, yes, they did. Yeah. So um, I, I just couldn't have been happier 
And it's not just the the emotional stuff at the end, but it, it gives you so many, you have so many, you know, comedic highlights in that. The thing that stands out to me is that the thing that stands out to me is the is that when she starts yelling at like Jack and it's this guttural sound. Was that in the script? Was that a was that a your idea? Was that Jimmy? It's all caps, but when I did it the first time, Deborah was like, oh, like I guess scared Deborah. <laughs> Because it's a it's a it's a it's a shriek it's a guttural shriek like you said, but the other thing I wanted to say about that episode that I think is very very important and very touching as well is the fact that you know we had Shelley Morrison who played Rosario for eight seasons, and who was the fifth Beatle, and she has now retired as an actress. She's in her early 80s, and she just felt that it was time to retire. And uh, boy, if there was ever if there were, was ever a great send off for a beloved character on a show, I mean, you can't do much better than that. So I thought for Shelley, for Shelley's sake, I love Shelley, and for for her, for her sake, I thought, wow, that is can't do yeah, that's pretty good. And. One of the other dynamics that has really grown, I think, over this revival season is the dynamic between Karen and Smitty. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> can you can you talk about those scenes because they just you seem to have so much fun all the time, but you seem to just specifically love those scenes, especially the kind of the three way scene between Karen and Malcolm, and then Smitty in the center. I'm obsessed with. Smitty, the, the actor's name is Charles Stevenson the third, and I don't know how old he is, but he's he's no spring chicken, right? So we've been doing this show since 1998, and then we came back, and Smitty was a big part of you know the original eight seasons. Yeah, every once in a while you'd see him, but he'd only have one line, right? And he was always funny, but he just had one line. And then all of a sudden, when we did the last two episodes of last season with Alec Baldwin, who's coming back this season, <laughs> um, because he's, you can't top it to work with. Um, so they, they gave Charles slash Smitty, they gave him more to do. They gave him like more, they just gave him more lines and jokes. And he, freaking nailed every single thing they gave him he nailed it and i mean the first time when we had a run through for the writers and he came out with those lines i mean people were falling out of their chairs they were like we've been wasting this incredible resource of this this guy is you know a comedic gem and all, all these years we didn't know that he was capable of so much more he really killed it and one of the lines that was so funny, which was a floor pitch, was um, when he says, hashtag me too, after Alec and I have been using him as our surrogate <laughs> to express our affection for one another without actually touching each other. So we touch Smitty instead. It just never, it just, it was, it was just like, you wanted to know how far, I mean, were you ever worried during that whole filming of that sequence, how far you could go? Um, <laughs> were people like saying, pull it back a little bit? I mean, I'll just say, I really laid one on him. I mean, I for real laid one on Charles and I didn't hear any complaints. <laughs> so I just want to ask, so the show has two more seasons coming up, longer seasons than what was originally planned. So how far would you like this show to go do you Our see a <laughs> i knew you were going to say that no until people literally want to pick up their computers or their televisions or their phones and like smash them out the window and you're throw them down on the floor and stomp on them and say i hate this show i'm so sick of it i want to run it into the ground is that okay uh it's hey fine by me um Finally. Megan Mullally, congratulations on the Emmy nomination. Best of luck, and uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. That was so fun.